Hey guys, VBED here with another V plays. Hey, this is Postal Monkey. Hey, and it's Avalation. So, a while ago, we, the three of us, we actually built a video that was a tech tree showcase of the American Light Fighter line, and that was very well received by all of our viewers. So, we thought we'd do another showcase, and this time we're going to be looking at the German Heavy Fighters, which also features, features some very iconic aircraft as well. Uh, so to start things out, we've actually cut out the tier one. We're going to go straight into tier two, and we've each been assigned particular aircraft that we'll discuss a little bit, and then we'll let the other two kind of play in with what they wanted to be their takeaways from wh when they flew those airplanes. So I'm going to lead it off with Avalation with the tier two. Yeah, so the uh, AO192, the German heavy at tier two, uh, it's obviously um, a pretty decent plane at that tier and just correct me if I'm wrong but there are no other um, heavies at tier 2 in the game no, so one. yep uh, unless there's some premium ones that I'm not aware of but um, having even. that on it it's a pretty sorry no not even there's another pretty, one uh, no, yeah so it's a pretty beasty plane um, it's kind of in a class of its own um, it's fairly average in um, performance specs, um, except for the pretty decent climbing capabilities. Um, it's not exceptionally fast. Uh, and its guns, um, it's the only uh, German heavy that doesn't have any cannons. Um, so the only place it really does struggle is like when it's going up against say a tier three heavy um but apart from that it's really um you know out and above on its own uh and having the four little bombs um also comes in really handy as well yeah i remember when i when i first flew this plane which the german line was the first heavy line i went down i remember i struggled so much with this plane until i realized oh you don't turn you just go straight through and hit people and keep on going because you i mean right in the, in the get-go from tier two you learn you've got to fly a heavy plane like a heavy plane you can't fly it like a light fighter by any means so yeah so for me, this this was like the first plane I flew. I pretty much flew the wings off of this thing, but this was pre 2.0. I flew this plane a lot in the closed beta because I there were no bombers and I wanted to fly bombers. So this was the closest I could get. So I flew this thing around a lot just because I enjoyed the big beefy hit point pool, the big engines, the ability to fly up at higher altitude and I made a lot of the mistakes that I complain about now where people are flying too high to be effective. I did that in this plane, but I, I just loved it. It was so neat, like it was such a big plane and it was able to get up there and nobody could really touch you. And I'd wait for people to kind of stall out and I'd gun them down and it had a tail gunner and it had bombs. So it was like, it had all these cool features. So between this and flying the, what is it, the tier two, um, Russian ground attacker. Those were my planes back in the day. I don't think I flew this post 2.0. Uh, interesting fact though, if you look at this plane, if, if I'm not mistaken, this was a civil aircraft that was used as like a, one of their first like transport aircraft. Like people would fly in this thing to get around. And hmm. I, what I thought was neat about that is much like early like tall ship battles and stuff like there wasn't ships built specifically for naval combat there were merchant ships that were like retrofitted to be able to carry guns in time of war and that's pretty much what happened with aviation in the initial phases like this plane wasn't meant for combat they just put guns on it you know what i mean and i thought that was a cool little thing to to bring up so, shoots enemies during yeah. the day and transports uh <laughs> you know customers during the night yeah like moves packages and dignitaries so i thought that was a cool <laughs> little thing it does look like they've literally just cut the uh the tail gunner's turret out of the top of the fuselage there yeah yeah very much 
I, I like early stage aviation, and since it's a mono wing, it's also fairly advanced for the time period, so I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, you guys want to move on to tier three? Yeah, sure. sure. All right, so this is my shameless plane, the Focke Wolf 5.7. <laughs> the thing has a roll rate that takes about a day and a half to do a full rotation at the wingtips, but it carries a lot of bombs, and I thought that that was the coolest thing when I first started flying these things, because it carries six bombs. Now, they take forever to reload. It's 300 yeah, seconds. It takes it's, an age. It is nuts, but... For the initial phases of a battle, you can flip the first capture zone fairly quickly, and at like tier 4 and below, you're lucky if you have more than 4 zones to capture. Everything's a super slow biplane, so they can't get anywhere, so if you can flip a zone early, that's like a majority of the battle. The rest of it, you're just going to be fighting over that third one that's kind of in between the two. The other thing is, it's the reason I say this is totally unfair is because somebody who knows the game well enough and has been flying for a while, these dual 20s have the ability to hit people from ranges that no other guns can hit. The damage potential is so high that you can snipe out planes from forever away and there's nothing they can do about it. And even though you're not fast, you're fast for the tier and again you have the altitude performance. And to add insult to injury, the tail gunner is a 20 millimeter tail gunner, yeah. 20 millimeter cannon. Like you can wreck, you can wreck people's faces with this thing. And since it's only at tier three, it's super easy to specialize. And now you're really just being a troll at low tiers. So I fly this to get the <laughs> dailies done, but I feel bad doing it. <laughs> if that makes any sense. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and this really is. I mean. A lot of people have the FW fifty seven in their um, in their hangar, it, just because it is such a strong plane at this tier. And there's not many other tier three heavies in the game, I don't believe. Correct me if I'm wrong on that one. There are not uh, that many. There's a Doe seventeen Z seven, which is a premium. Yep. Uh, which, it's basically a bomber. Yeah. Acting like a heavy. It it has more of your like your BF one ten type guns. It's got three machine guns and a single twenty, so it's a totally different mm -hmm. setup. Um, but this tends it's to be a, a go-to tier plane. three plane. Yeah, it's huge. <laughs> yeah, it was just it's flipping like... between them. It's monstrous. Yeah. The tailplane just about takes up half your screen when you're flying the damn thing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I was just pulled up the 410, and the 410 is about half the wingspan. It, it's kind of ludicrous. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, this is another one. It, I, I call it my flying greenhouse because of the, all that glass on the canopy <laughs> yeah. and stuff. It, mm -hmm. I'd, I'd hate to be receiving a shell in that friggin' glass cockpit. Don't throw rocks. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned the glass cockpit. That that tends to be a um, like a mainstay of this line. Um, once you get you know from from tier from this tier up to tier six, at least there's quite a lot of glass on the cockpit for these planes. And you know what though, like that, it's actually uh, a testament to the manufacturers as well. I mean, no one can claim the Germans didn't put too much effort into their or didn't put enough effort into their aircraft they uh, they put too much into their tech sometimes because they put so much glass on the thing I, I can't imagine it was easy to mass produce a lot of these aircraft so yeah it's right. definitely a quality over quantity kind of thing absolutely uh without any further ado let's let's move forward into the 110s because we got a lot of planes to cover uh bf 110 at tier four yeah, that's the uh, the B, and I just bought this back actually. Um, unfortunately, a few weeks before March of Nations came through, where I could have gotten it on discount. And again, I, I first went down this line as my first heavy line, so this was probably like the end of 2017 or something like that. And um, I don't didn't it is plane didn't quite stand out, but I didn't really know how to play the game then. When I bought it back this time, I realized immediately that this is really like a pocket. ME410, and I know we're going to talk about the ME410 later, but this plane is really a very solid, very good all-around heavy plane. Um, for its tier, it has exceptional gun power. Um, you've got those 220s, you've got the 430 cals, um, you've got kind of a mediocre gunner, 
Um, but you've also got a little bit of ground um, armament in those two bombs. Um, they don't take 300 seconds, luckily. They take only 200 seconds. <laughs> um, but they do 8,800 damage. You can get those dropped um, in the beginning there. But this plane is, is fairly quick for this tier. There are some other tier 4s at this point um, as far as heavies are concerned. But this plane stood out for me as being a really well-rounded heavy plane, a very strong platform. Um, for this tier, I really am glad that I was able to buy it back. Yeah, I yeah, that really starts to uh, distinguish itself uh, I, with these heavies. It's such an iconic plane too. Like this, this mm -hmm. is a major workhorse for the Germans during World War II, and so, along with the 109. So it's still this is the the first of the really iconic aircraft that people remember from this time period. Uh, I do think it feels like a downgrade coming from the Focke Wolf 5.7, though, because the, yes, it has 20s, but it also has these 7.92s, and are they keeping up with the damage output that you're used to with the 5.7? And then you get this tail gunner that's a piddly 7.92, and yeah. it probably feels like a downgrade, and it feels like a downgrade with only two bombs now, but I think it's trying to shift your mindset a little bit more and get you more into the idea of you're going to be using a mixed gun load loadout for a bit of the aircraft for the next few and hopefully this is getting you prepared for dealing with those false hit indicators as we like to call them well and i think that the the balance of the 220s for me when i'm flying it i I like those machine guns just being able to be there and I hate when you're um, attacking a plane and your 20s hit but they leave it at like seven hit points when in a plane like this you can just kind of hold down the trigger and uh, you know get that seven hit points knocked down and I think the 110 um, this initial 110 at tier four I think it kind of forces you to play a true heavy style whereas where the the FW57 because you're a little bit lower and because you've got some flexibility with the plane, you can get away with not just boom and zoom. With the 110, it has a significant jump up in speed once you get to this tier. Uh, this plane has a jump up in speed, and you can utilize that to to your advantage and really hit people and just keep on going and get wait till you're 5,000 yeah. feet away and turn back around. Yeah, that's where you really start to notice it is, is this tier and, and uh, in the tier 5 as well. I feel like the early stage heavies, like they, their climb rates are so low yeah. that it's you, once you sacrifice that altitude to gain airspeed, you really pay for it because you got to struggle to climb back up, and you feel like you're just crawling for yeah. every foot or meter. And that is true. And the, it's they're it's, saving grace. Go ahead. I was just going to say that they do have a lot of boost, um, boost timer, so. That's kind of their one uh, grace that you've got there. If you've got some boost saved up, you can use that to to get going. But uh, if you if you're already low and slow, just that boost is not a huge uh, like it's not a very powerful boost. So yeah, you really um, got to have a bit of speed to go with it. I guess uh, when I one thing I'd I'd offer people that feel like maybe they're getting a downgrade from the five seven is don't focus on the guns and, and the bombs. Focus on the engine power availability because mm -hmm. it's going to feel better to climb in this than, than it would in the 5.7 or even the AO. So it'll keep getting better as you go through. And I think we'll see that once we start talking about the tier 8 and up as well, that they're really, they got a lot of climb rate capability to, to get them out of those trouble spots. And I do know that we're talking about the game aspect of it, but if you look at the, the tech tree portion of it, and if you look at the history of the BF-110, like, Germany in, you know, made this plane before World War II, and they tried to make a better heavy-type plane throughout the war, and they could really never come up with something significantly better, or at least better enough to, to replace it, to the point where the BF-110 series was the mainstay for heavy planes throughout the war. Uh, you know, that the 410 uh, was kind of invented at the very end of the war, but too late. And they were trying to replace the 110, but the 110 is just a solid, solid platform all around. 
All right. So with that, do we want to talk about the 110 Echo? I know it's kind of uh, just the next tier up in uh, in exchange, but maybe you got some extra tidbits to pull away from how this performs at tier five, because I feel like it it's a tier five changes some things gameplay wise. Well, the speed is the um, I was going to say it's the most not noticeable thing, but it's really kind of in step with uh, the last couple of tiers, isn't it? Well, I see the climb rates higher too. Like you get a substantial rate uh, climb rate increase, and that'll make the power feel like it's there. I've always kind of equated climb rate to acceleration characteristics as well. Right. Because when you're trying to uh, either catch something up high like a bomber or escape from a, a multi-roll or a fighter, that's where you want to go is up. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, and, and uh, I like that what I like about the, the Echo is it's if you first get it, and even once you upgrade it, you're like, okay, it kind of feels like it feels like the previous plane, but it is the previous plane, but everything's a little bit better about it, right? You've got the same guns, but they reach a little bit further. You've got um, you know, the same layout as far as um, the engine and the, the plane style look, but it's a little bit faster. And it does everything just a little bit better, and it feels um, it feels right in line with what if you if you learn to play the um, tier four well, then the tier five will feel like just a, a progression um, and an enjoyable progression of that. I don't remember what the reload time was on the bombs. Do either of you guys remember? Was it still 200 seconds? Still 200, yeah. Okay. Which isn't great. Like, yeah. I mean, a couple of 250s at tier 5 is is okay. It's not as... It's not like the 6100s you get at tier 3. Yeah. Yeah, it still hasn't caught up with tier 3, huh? So I... No, it's... Go ahead. It's a bit of an outlier. I was just saying, it's a bit of an oddity, that tier 3 uh, bomb loadout. Yeah, it, it's just different. And again, it's... It's... Is it really that valuable with a 300 second reload? <laughs> like it just turns into like a like a farce. Like a lot of times, I find yeah. myself stripping bombs off of planes, but those are internal carry on the 57, so it doesn't affect your airspeed. But on these, mm -hmm. you you start to you start to add weight, you're starting to decrease your overall uh, performance because I believe these are external carry bombs, right? They are. Yeah. But at tier five, I feel like you're you're hitting a different gambit because at tier four, you'll you'll still come up against the Focke Wolf five sevens and stuff like that. But with, at tier five, you're you're gonna start seeing some beefier planes, and I, I feel like the you're going to be running into a lot more of those Spitfire type planes. You're gonna be hitting mm -hmm. those uh, the P forties, the altitude fighters that are gonna be able to intercept the aircraft because. There really wasn't much of any altitude fighters that could mess with your aircraft too much, but at this tier, you're, you're heavy, which the main counter is an altitude fighter, you're going to start seeing more of those, and they're going to be that much more potential to be able to take you out, so you have to be more aware of your surroundings if you want to be effective once you get up to like tier 4, tier 5, and I think the 110s uh, is when you're it's gonna either it's gonna make or break you or hopefully just teach you that you need to keep your head on a swivel and your energy is much more important thoughts mm, that's for sure do you guys run with the bombs or without them because i kind of tried both and i feel like the 110e um is kind of an average performing plane especially compared to um which it starts to get some uh competition from the other nations at tier five mm -hmm. Um, and the speed advantage that you get just from keeping the bombs at home is not great. Do you guys run with them or not? So I don't have these, <laughs> but I, I could imagine I, I'd probably strip it down if I found I was having any issues with airspeed. So. Well, I can say that tier four I kept the bombs on, uh, but at tier four there was there wasn't a lot that could keep up with you. The the quote unquote right. jump. That you get going to tier five, I don't think is this, it's a jump. I mean, there's there's movement as far as your airspeed's a little quicker and your 
altitude performance is a little bit higher. But V, you make a really good point that a lot of other nations get a, a little bit more significant of a jump when it comes to their light fighter performance. The, the um, P40 can can go pretty high compared to the P36 kind of situation. Um, suddenly you've got the P38s um, that you didn't have to deal with at tier four. Um, there's some other, you know, there's like the, the key at tier five it, yeah. um, can get up pretty high too. So um, where you kind of felt like you, I don't want to say you owned the sky at tier four, but you you definitely felt like you had a place um, at tier four. At tier five, I think it gets a little bit muddled and it starts to um, get lost. Because that's where it's kind of an interesting trade-off, like keeping the bombs or not, because I noticed the P-38s had no trouble keeping up with me. And mm. then it becomes a question of, well, am I better off having um, some extra uh, capping capabilities or do I try and squeeze out that speed and, and just stay uh, sort of smooth and fast? Uh, uh, it's, interesting choice. It's it's always a tough argument because I used to be mm -hmm. of the mindset of, well, if they're giving me bombs, I'm going to put bombs on because I like explosions. And boom. <laughs> yeah, right. So I would always keep them on. But uh, it, I started to learn like the P-38, like if the P-38 can outpace me and he can outmaneuver me, guess who I just avoided? Yeah. You know what I mean? And now that you can queue allies, you can queue the bots to attack things, I'll send him at the P-38 yeah. and I'll make a gunning pass and then I'll straighten it out for my bots to go shoot it down. You know, like there are things you can do. It's more the aspect of if you have a higher base airspeed because you don't carry the bombs, and then you get a higher boosted airspeed as a result of not carrying the bombs. You've increased your average speed by 10, 15 miles an hour or uh, kilometers or whatever. But my point is that it doesn't seem like much, but I feel like it probably adds up in the long run, especially just for the climb. And not to beat a P-38F because that's not going to happen. But what you can do is you can beat out maybe that... Um, ambitious multi-role that thinks he can come get you in his Corsair or something you know what I mean and mm -hmm. that's where I think yep. it kind of comes into into a discussion of the bomb the bombs may be the make and break point you know what I mean yeah yeah for sure yeah you can you could get away with them a lot easier at tier four or at tier five but it's definitely um it's definitely a discussion point and I think it's one of those things that different play styles will dictate if you keep the bombs on or keep, or take the bombs off. Uh, but in most in most standpoints at the tier 5, it probably wouldn't be best to keep them on. All right, moving on. Yeah. Sure. ME410 or arguably actually the ME210 plus. Uh, so little history that I got when I started digging around, because when they offered me the 210, I'm like, what the hell is this? They, we got a 410. What's the difference? They look they look nearly identical. Um, the problem with the 210 is because it's got that snubbed nose in that big cockpit, it actually caused some issues with the airflow over the vertical stabilizers. So if you don't have like your, your rudder fin isn't getting enough airflow, it makes it so your it doesn't keep your your back end straight. It starts sliding like as though you were driving down the road and you started hydroplaning. It starts skidding from side to side, and it was very unsettling. And it wasn't. <laughs> I it, bet. Yeah, well, it's also not good because you can you can kind of get yourself into like a lateral stall or whatever you might call that, like kind of this weird auto yawing. So the I don't think it was nearly as bad as some pilots reported it because, you know, rumors are rumors and it just gets worse and snowballs. So the 210, like pilots, it got a really bad reputation and made its way through the ranks. And people did not like the 210. Well, the 410 was like an attempt to kind of fix some of those issues and some modifications to the airframe. So it got a better vertical stabilizer, better airflow. But since crews hated the 210, they changed the designation to the 410 so it's a completely different number so it's a completely different airplane because not everybody saw the 210 they just heard about the 210 so when you started fielding the 410 it would have a better reception hopefully so i thought that that was a funny little tidbit of history on this thing uh but to talk about the 410 in, in game 
the 410 is when you get your true harmonica gun system, as I call it, uh, because you've got 30s, 20s, and 13 millimeter machine guns. It's just a whole bunch of different guns. And I had the hardest time initially flying this thing, because I'm like, there's so many different guns, none of them are all hitting at the same time. Well, that's <laughs> only true if somebody's coming across your field of view, like there's a really high departure angle. But if you settle in right behind somebody or even in a head-on, all of those guns are going to hit. And the closer you get, the more they overlap with their shell velocities and ranges. So there's a huge amount of damage potential from this thing because it has like over 600 cumulative damage. Well, I think it has about 600 cumulative damage. I have gas-operated action on here. But it's it's an it can be a very dangerous and nasty plane. And that's one of the things I started to appreciate when I went back and rebought it because I had learned, I think I learned how to play heavies well enough that it <laughs> felt really good. Uh, there are some weird options for what you can do for loadouts with this because there is an option to carry two bombs internally on this, but you sacrifice the two 30 millimeter cannon mounts. I have heard of people removing the 30s and just going with the 20s that you can put in its place as well so you can have four 20s and two 792 machine guns sorry i said 13 millimeters they're 792s but people did that because it was more consistent firepower i like mm -hmm. going with a max damage output the 30s reach out a little bit further when you're going up against a bomber they really do sync up a lot better uh, I all I do carry the 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 uh, air to ground ordnance. It's four of those big honking rockets that the Germans get. They actually do quite a bit more damage than the five inch rockets do on their own, for the Americans and stuff. So I like those. Um, but I found, and I did a video on this, that if you if you fire these guns, I used to say aim with your biggest caliber gun, but lately i've been aiming and i've been pulling lee like mentally in my head pulling the lead equivalent for the 20 millimeter cannons and mm -hmm. that gave me enough variance in the front and back end for my lead that i was always having something hit and then as i got closer and all those guns kind of converged you know machine guns were hitting in the front of the aircraft 20s were hitting mid body and the 30s were hitting in the tail like i was starting to really crush people and it was nice to see that damage kind of slowly start piling up and then exponentially increase as you close the distance and that plane close, just yeah. boom gone and it's a really pretty looking plane and i really enjoy it, is, it. Yeah. it's so sleek it's just like someone took the, the 110 and went you know what let's make it look really cool <laughs> and it does so. that uh, that bubble canopy really sells it doesn't it it totally does right uh, but apparently it didn't help with aerodynamic uh characteristics because that that shape so i don't know yeah right wow. i'm sure a history buff's going to correct me on some of my misconceptions like i probably got something wrong here but uh what do you well, guys okay. think you wouldn't be v that if if uh, that didn't happen right <laughs> and and i i'd love to hear in the comments if somebody had some more info to offer because i i, I don't want to be wrong i don't want to perpetuate a, a falsehood but if i'm right i would like validation too so that would be cool i like the historical the historical discussions so yeah i couldn't i mean i've heard of people putting so when you specialize this plane like you have to have the 30s and you, you... yep you have to have the rockets. Um, and I've specialized mine. And honestly, I couldn't imagine having it with the 20s. I can understand consistency. And um, what's funny about that is we'll, we'll discuss that um, in the future um, down this line. But the the 30s on this plane do twice as much, literally twice as much damage each as the 20s. And yeah, the 20s reach out a little bit further. And okay, you get a little bit of consistency. But when the 30s hit... I mean, they just shave chunks of hit points off of whatever you're shooting at, and you, yeah, they you feel like they do, and you can take out bombers, you can take out GAs, you can take out light fighters in one pass, multi-rolls in one pass, um, you make heavy fighters regret their decisions in one pass, <laughs> um, and, and it's, I mean, yeah, you've got to work a little bit harder to get the 30s to work, but you you want the 30s because when they work they work i think is how they say that <laughs> um, <laughs> but you also like this gun setup is very similar 
it's a similar style to a lot of the other German planes. You, um, the, some of the light fighters have a one heavy cannon and a couple of 20s and a couple of 30, um, 30 cals. Some of the higher tier planes um, on the Germans, like the FW-190s and things of that nature, have like different setups of the guns. And yeah, they, there's a nuance to them, but if you can work with that, you can really make it sing. And you... you you can feel comfortable in any situation because you've got guns that you don't necessarily need to hit with the 30s if you only need to take off, you know, 50 hit points. Don't worry about the 30s. You're fire the 20s and the, the 30 cals. Yeah. You've got a gun yeah. for a situation, and that's what I like about it. Yeah, I, yeah. I thought that um, there's quite a quite a um, a difference between uh, the 410 and the 110E. And I actually haven't spent a lot of time in this plane. I haven't got it specialized. Um, but I, I remember uh, flying this plane and thinking, wow, this thing has got a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. um, I had some really high scoring games in it. Um, I was actually in a big rush to get to the uh, 109C. Um, so I kind of uh, didn't give it the time that it deserves. I'll probably go back and play it a lot more. Um, but I do recall those, uh, you know, when you got all those guns synced up, uh, like you say, uh, it was just devastating. And and it's the difference between one pass and two. Like, you can just, you, you don't have to turn around with this thing. You, <laughs> it just <laughs> leaves devastation in its wake. Um, the the other big difference is the uh, the field of, fire of the turrets being that uh, turret guns on this plane are mounted on the side yeah. and able, able to shoot below you and out to the sides rather than the traditional uh, sort of up and back uh, yeah. from all the other ones preceding it so it does make it a bit easier I feel to uh, to get away to, to make the decision of which direction you want to go whereas the other ones you've really got to be climbing to uh, utilize the turret. They also look they, very cool. <laughs> they do. They look yes. very, uh, yeah, like almost futuristic, right? But you make a good point. I hadn't really thought about that. And one of the more frustrating things about some of the tail gunners um, is the fact that you're like, well, that that plane's you know below the horizon. I can't do anything about it with my tail gunner. I guess I'll just you know light up a cigarette back there. But with the tail gunner on this plane, you really do have some flexibility. Yeah, it's, it's nice. All right, so you mentioned it, so we'll move on to it. The uh, 109Z, I believe, Postal, that was your plane. <laughs> it was, and everything that you've just learned about uh, all the planes leading up to this plane get totally thrown <laughs> out the window because you've got no Forget tail gunner. It. <laughs> it looks completely different. Um, it's, it's based on the BF-109s um, and basically fused together um, two fuselages and unlike um, some of the American concepts of uh, dual fuselage you know fighters being stuck together this plane only you can only have the pilot in one of the fuselages they actually covered up um, the other fuselage which I would think from just like uh, trying to fool the enemy kind of hmm. thing you'd want both of them to look like a pilot could be in it um, but hey who am I um, but I, I remember when I first got this plane and, and I remember going down this line and the, the ME410 was the first plane that I went down that I really was like, okay, I can see the potential of this line. And of course, then you get to this plane, but I did quite enjoy this plane. I bought it back and I really, really enjoy it, um, now that I've bought it back. Um, and what I like about the plane is, well, we've talked about the thirties previous to this. On, on this plane, you've got quite a lot of options, actually. Um, um, it does come with a one 250-pound bomb, which we've talked about having bombs on the, you know, having a bomb on uh, a heavy or not having a bomb on a heavy. You know, on this particular plane, it's one bomb. And, you know, the damage potential is pretty minimal, especially now that you're at Tier 7. You're only doing 4,400, so you really don't see a whole lot of people with the bomb on there, and I don't keep the no. bomb on here either. 
because you're at tier seven, you've got to deal with some tier eights, and you got to deal with a lot of those jets. You real, in my opinion, you want to keep as much speed as you can. Um, yeah. But this plane's really good at its airspeed. It's really good at if you're if you're not um, turning too much, you're able to keep that airspeed. What I have noticed is if you start to turn, it does start to bleed its airspeed quite a bit. Um, but what what I like about it is that you can make it your own. You, If it's fully specced, quote-unquote, you have four 30-millimeter cannons, which are the same 30 mils that you had on the ME410. Um, they're Mark 108s, and, or MK108s, my bad. Um, you've got four of them, so they put out quite a big spray, but if you want, you can put you know, two 20s and two 30s. And you know, have those two twenties that people might like for more consistency that reach out to about twenty six hundred feet, um, and still do one hundred and ten damage per second, and then keep two thirties that do one hundred and eighty damage per second, um, and have a, a much less effective firing range of about nineteen hundred feet. I accidentally, I was so excited when I bought this plane back. I was just super hyped. I bought it back, put the paint on it because God knows I can't fly anything without paint. Hopped in it, threw a, a one-point pilot in it, and hopped in the game, and then realized, oh crap, I forgot to upgrade my engine at all, and I've only got two 20 mil cannons on it. <laughs> but it, it it performed. It's there are the hub-mounted 20 mils because um, that's what you start off with. Um, but just with those two hub-mounted um, 20 mils, I was able to get a, a wing legend, and you were able to do what you need to do in this plane. Since adding the 30 mil cannons onto it, and um, that's how I fly it is two 20s on the hub and two 30s on the outboard on the outboard weapon. But most people will play it with the 30s. You've got that flexibility with the plane, which I really like. And I didn't, it didn't. When I first went down the line, it didn't really dawn on me that you've got that flexibility to match the, your play style. And that's something I really like about this plane that I um, don't really hear about very often. Yeah, it. Um, yeah, I was I was in a big hurry to get to this plane just because it's so different, um, especially to the other uh, heavies in that line. And uh, yeah, it's. I find it actually quite challenging um, to fly, especially because you you want to fly it more boom and zoom and. Um, uh, you know, a bit of high altitude dogfighting as well. Um, it does perform well at the altitude, um, but it's certainly let down by its roll rate and mm -hmm. uh, and its turn rate. So it's it can be tricky. But but obviously having those uh, quad thirties is just absolutely devastating once you get those all to to line up. They they're pretty loose loosely aligned. Um, so it can take a bit of specializing to get them to <laughs> all go in the same direction. It's like a shotgun. It's like yeah, kapoof, yeah, kapoof, kapoof. Yeah, it's a street sweeper. So this, the you, the guns. It's the guns. It the good thing though is that if you get used to them here, it only gets better mm -hmm. because then you get centrally mounted thirties, but you're still getting thirties and it it's been a reoccurring theme throughout this game and i think we can all attest to it based on like the comments and stuff that we get in our videos especially when we do an aircraft with 30s is that people don't like them they they like the idea of 30s but when you are right. using 30s they have a slower rate of fire uh these ones have a pretty short range yes, and they do. and they overheat fairly quickly. Now, they hit like a Mack truck when they make contact, but if you got any type of weird little server lag, the shell decides that it wants to go wide, it punishes you so much more than if you had 20s, because the 20s are that nice mix between the machine guns and the 30s. They got good damage, they got good rate of fire, they got good range, and they don't. They cool down fast if you overheat them. But with the 30s, man, you, you either hit, or you're you're cursing your your existence but the 109z i hated and i could not wait to get out of it and way back in the day when slay was still making videos and i was watching him play it he goes 
you know, he goes, I really like the 109 set. And I'm like, wait, what? I'm like, I'm flying that thing right now and I hate it. And he goes, figure out the guns here. Because if you can't figure them out, you're not going to like the rest of the re- re- the rest of the line. Mm-hmm. And I took the time. And it, it, unfortunately, it wasn't until I was at the end of the grind that I was like, I had some really good games in it. And it just crushed things because I was going after the right planes. I was making sure I was vectoring in on stern conversion. So I wasn't getting like in these high departure shots where a plane's going exactly across my field of view. And I'm trying to yank the the, the freaking control <laughs> yoke. Like, you're not going to get them. It's a heavy, right? So it starts to get your head wrapped around the idea of like that gingerly like sloping movement that i think we'll talk about when we start getting to the 262s and stuff but you got to be very like fluid in your movements because you don't want deliberate lose. yeah very deliberate fluid if you're yanking your mouse all the way over and you're like turn turn that's not what you should have been doing you were in the wrong spot you put yourself in the wrong spot you always have to plan for not getting the kill you always have to plan for missing and always have an exit strategy and that plane is like the barrier to entry. If you can't figure it out in the 109Z, you're probably not going to have a really tough time in the 262. You might stick it out and learn it in the 262, but it's not going to be mm-hmm. easy. So, well, and and some other similarities between this and the tiers above it that I'm not sure a lot of people catch on to is the hit points on this plane are actually less than the tier six version. Um, and the hit points for each of the tiers above this are less than all the other heavy fighters, you know, comparable eight, nines, and tens. Um, the, I, I equate it to this being a BF109Z technically, and that's probably why the hit points are less, and that's why the um, boost is less on these particular planes as well. But it is in line with from the guns to the hit points comparatively to the the play style that you play on the 262 and above um, it's it really does you're exactly right it builds you for that um, going forward yeah it's an interesting point because uh, it's certainly got plenty of surface area like with the with the broad wing and dual f- fuselage so it's not exactly a hard plane to hit um, if you're not going fast enough so you really got to capitalize on that speed mm-hmm all right, so you guys brought it up. Might as well jump into it. And I, hey, I'm I'm great with segues. Yeah. Well, I I'm thankful that you guys let me do this plane because I wanted to buy this back for this video because I I it's the only two six two I don't have, so I bought it back and I remembered it being a neat plane. I uh, just needed the credits, so I moved on. But this plane sucks for grinding. It, it, it it's true for a lot of the german line a lot of the german line it's like ugh, i got all new engines all new guns all i gotta get a fuselage to even get the next set of guns because on this plane stock you only get 230s again you, you're like wait what why am i being punished for unlocking the next plane it should be better and i have to unlock not one not two but three engine upgrades if i want to get the full potential so i got to get the airframe then I gotta get the guns. This is the order I suggest, by the way, guys. Get the air, get the airframe, then get the four guns, then get all of the engines. Don't put any bombs, any rockets, nothing on this thing, because without the engine power, you're gonna be a sitting duck and you're gonna hate your life. But if you stick with it and you keep this plane and you decide that you're gonna go forward and specialize it, which I plan to do at some point. It seems weird when you're looking at the engine tree because you got Jumo, BMW 003A, Jumo 004B, and then you got this thing that looks like a weird rocket engine, and it says Hawk 509. Mm-hmm. You still are getting the Jumo 004Bs when you upgrade to that, but it's the... Yeah they shoehorn in there a rocket engine into the tail and people don't talk about this they don't talk about it during the upgrades or the reviews it has a rocket engine so when we start talking about climb performance how the climb performance steadily gets better from tier two all the way up this thing has a climb rate with my current configuration of 500 feet a second because it has a rocket motor in its butt (laughs) Things nuts, and I still and I have the air-to-air rockets mounted on the wings. 
This is also yeah. the first plane where you're going to be getting air-to-air -air rockets on your 262s, and you're going to be like, whoa, I have air-to-air -air rockets in my heavy plane. So now when you get stuck in a head-on with another heavy or any other plane, you can just dab that R key, which, by the way, you should fire all of them anytime yeah. you're in a situation. These do not have the oomph of the, of the 94D, but, yeah, you, you unload them all. But these 30s are the same 30s from the 109 set, so they're really slow velocity. It's, I feel like you're throwing like a handful of rocks. Like you ever throw a handful of rocks yeah. into the water as a kid, and you're like, plump, plump, plump. you're like, I, you, you could barely hit the broad side of a barn sometimes. Like that it's was just less impressive than I thought it'd be. Yeah, you're like, I thought that would be fun, but it's these like softballs. You're just kind of throwing and lobbing out in the sky, and you're like, I really hope that hits something, but. If you use the speed, you use the surprise element of being so fast. Like people look at the mini map, and they're like, "Oh, there's a heavy, but he's like a zone away." I should, oh, geez, he's here, and you're unloading these thirties. And if you if you get into this plane, and it is the if this is the first production jet fighter in the world, um, it's super iconic. It's really neat. I wanted it back in my hangar for that purpose, but. It is the beginning of the greatness that is the rest of the line. So, uh, thoughts on 262 at tier 8, guys? Well, I know we talked a little bit about the similarities uh, between you know, the, the 109Z and this plane. You know, it's got the, the same 30s, although I think the 30s on this have like a, just a little bit more range. Um, it's got the same kind of play style it builds in there, but, but there's so many more differences between the two. Um, this was the first tier eight fighter, heavy fighter I ever got. I hated it. I absolutely hated it. Um, I think I got the 430s first, though. I think um, I don't think I got the rocket engine till near the end, and I was so glad to be done with this plane. In fact, I didn't like this plane so much that I like just stopped grinding for like four months on it. And then when I got the HG2, um, I wasn't I wasn't setting myself up for any excitement on that one. Um, but that being said, I would like to go back and buy this now because I know what a rocket can do with a plane. Now that I've seen, again, this is the first, you know, the first tier eight heavy that I ever had. So like, what do, what do jets do? Um, now that you see what that extra boost can do for you, and at tier eight, I mean, as far as a tech tree plane is concerned, there's nothing else like this. Um, a 1056 is the the other heavy um, jet powered plane in the game, and it is not a 262 as far as get up and go is concerned, right? This this thing is so unique; it has so much potential. Um, I I get excited about it, even though I hated it when I first played it. I get excited about the thought of getting it back and um, you know stomping on those tier sevens, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, that's my first memory of this plane is not flying it, but getting absolutely wrecked by yes. a good pilot. Um, and and I can remember sitting there after the defeat and just thinking, what the hell am I supposed to do about that? Like, <laughs> what can what can you do? Yeah, you know, like it's just ridiculous. Um, and really, the only thing you can do is keep an eye on that map and make sure you don't get lined up by it because if you do you're toast like it's just ridiculous um it's a super powerful plane it's amazing well it is a super powerful plane but it needs to be played right like we're we're talking about it yeah. as like it's got a halo on it and it's just this be this undefeatable beast but the range of those 30 cows uh, 30, so cows, 30 mils so, so short. short if you're not playing it right if you're not leading That's properly true. if you're not paying attention to what you're attacking um you're going to be completely ineffective. Great, you're going to be a rocket, but you're not going to hit anything. So you need <laughs> to have the right tactic when it comes to the angle. You need to have the right tactic as far as your escape route is concerned because you're not going to outturn anything. Yeah. This I, I didn't look it up, but I'm willing to bet this is one of the least maneuverable tier 8 planes in the game. It's, um, it's, not, it's not great. 
<laughs> it, it's it's not bad though. The thing is, I think this is this may be a good candidate for a G suit, although I don't think it's an option, um, because you're you're always above your threshold for speed. Oh, it can get a G suit. It can it's, get a G suit. It's always yeah. above your threshold for maneuverability because it actually has a better maneuverability than its predecessors. It's got a fourteen point nine second turn time, because I don't have any turn mods on it, but. When you're covering that much space in that amount of time, you're like, yeah, sure, you can make that turn, but you're doing it around the perimeter of an entire capture zone because it's just yeah, it's so fast. Miles an hour. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, you can do it in 15 seconds, but you're going to be taking a whole city block to do the dang thing. Like, it's just like turning a freaking school bus. Uh, on top of that, this is the first time that I felt like I was flying a heavy in this line, if that makes sense. Like I really felt, uh, yeah, I felt it in the 410, I felt it in the 57, but this felt like a very substantial airplane. The hits that it can have, the speed at which it flies, the deliberate nature of being up at altitude, and and kind of reminded me of like all those old like like. Um, 70s movies like you know like iron eagle and stuff where you're flying mm -hmm. and you're like you look out the window you're like target you know x number of miles away you know off the uh, off my beam and then you're like rolling in and you're like <sighs> roll the plane in like you're like you're something out of top gun you're like you you assess the target you line it up you got to get the shot right you're like lining in i'm going in for gun i'm going in for guns <laughs> and you like line it up and you make the attack run and you have to be so deliberate in it and i love that it just feels like that visceral like the era of jet flight and you are yeah. right, the 30s are different. They, they do 10 less damage compared to the Z, and they have slightly less range, believe it or not. So, for the Zs, so. Anyways, slightly less? Yeah. Slight, are it, you sure? It's no, no, it's no, so this this has greater range and greater damage than the Z. So, sorry, I, might oh, have yeah. sa I said that oddly. Uh, my point is, you are still getting a nice gun upgrade. You're not getting the exact same gun, so. Yeah, it's yeah. keeping it's pace the with the yeah. tier. Correct, exactly. Yeah, it's the same, same style as far as like the lobbing shells kind of thing is concerned. But... Oh, yeah. 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 I feel like it's a little bit easier to shoot with being that you've got four in the nose, and I feel like it must have a, a better rate of fire too than the 109. I'm, I'm going to have to fact check that. <laughs> fact checking. Uh, the rate of fire of this plane, I. 240 rounds per minute on on the 1944 variant which is on the 260. It's 240 on the Z. Yeah. So they're the same. It probably just feels different because okay, you're getting same. that shotgun spread. Yeah. There and may be a cooldown rate that we're not seeing as well. Like overheat rate, cooldown rate, you know what I mean? Like the burst right. line. Because yeah. those are the I always soft wonder that. stats. Yeah. Because um, you see, I feel like you see that quite a bit um, throughout the game in different different tier to tier when you go to the next level, if it's the same exact gun. Maybe it's a placebo effect in my head where I'm like, of course it should be a sh uh, cool, a quicker cooldown rate, but um, I do feel like it does cool down a little bit. All right. Uh, HG2, tier 9. I think that was you, Avalation. Yeah, that's me. Um, I mean, everything you like about the uh, original 262, you just kind of love about the HG2. Uh, it's, again, just an absolutely devastating plane. Um, <laughs> I really don't know what else to say about it than that because it's, uh, like, to me, it's it's almost a bully in the sky. Like, it's just ridiculous. Um uh, I have been flying mine with the bombs on it. You get a couple of 250s. Mm -hmm. And if you need to go and help out of that mining facility, you can. Like, it's, it's, it does everything really well. It's going gonna, it's gonna to terrorize the ground pounders. It's going to terrorize the bombers. It's going to compete with the other heavies. And it's got the speed to uh, mess with the fighters as well. Like, it's, it's an all-round beast. This is the first one 
in I, I think this is the, yeah this is the first aircraft in the entire line that you're you're getting you get those bombs and you get the air to air rockets you can do both mm-hmm. you don't have to choose and these are the 30s that you get at tier 10 they're the same 30s they're an upgraded 30 they do more damage they do 350 yeah. damage a second 330 mm-hmm. rounds a minute so that's a decent increase in volume of fire because we mentioned that being an issue and they actually fire out further which doesn't seem like a lot but when you're doing these run-ins at high speed you almost need to take a couple ranging shots just to make sure you're lined up properly yeah. and yep. then you just hold just down that mouse button that. but if you only have a half second of fire time because you're <laughs> right past him uh, this does have the volume of fire to make that happen, and since you're getting used to these guns, then it'll really help you when you get to the next one. But before we get ahead of ourselves, Postal? It's funny that you mentioned that tactic of half-second burst. Like, in real life, I did a little bit of research on not this plane, but the, the previous plane. The tactic was to, because you had to get so close to it, was to come in at an angle and just fire a spread of these 30 mil cannons. Um, and it's very much a tactic that you use at tier 8, tier 9, and tier 10 um, to, to varying degrees as you get higher and faster. But I, as much as I disliked the tier 8 262 when I first used it, I absolutely loved the tier 9 262. And I think it equates to a lot of it has to do with these guns. And, and you mentioned it, V, that it's just a, it seems on paper like, okay, you get an extra 120 feet, um, you know. But the combination of that on the range, the f- rate of fire being a, a decent amount, 50 more rounds a second, uh, or no, almost, uh, what, 90 rounds a minute. Yep. I mean, then that damage per second. Um, there, I mean, there'd be times when I'd fly it and I would just laugh at planes just going from, you know, over 1,000 HP, some of those bombers, to, to nothing pretty quickly. Um I, I fell in love with this plane probably like two games into it, three games into it. Um, I, I think V might have been on the receiving end of the game that made me fall in love with this plane. <laughs> but Most likely. But the airspeed <laughs> air was just so good on it. Um, as, as much as the normal, the, the Tier 8 had airspeed, the Tier 9 just, it's even faster. And this, like everything's a blur almost. It's just standing still and... <laughs> woe unto the tier 8s that, that run into you. Um, yeah. And you mentioned it, uh, Abel, that it's got the combination of the bombs and the rockets. And um, it is nice to be able to... I kept the bombs on mine to be able to just throw them down and you've got such a... They don't impact the airspeed so much because your airspeed is so significant. Um, and still have those air-to-air rockets and um, you know punch people in the face kind of thing. Um what it was, you know, it's got okay rate of climb, and it's not like terrible, but it's not. It's actually, it's actually slightly less than the tier eight because of that rocket engine. And and I and I'm sure that's exactly what it is. But in a straight line, and going is concerned, um, you know, without the boost, so to speak, the yeah. the HG two just felt so comfortable. Um, and once you really lock into the true boom and zoom, like this thing booms and this thing zooms, and um, you know, don't dogfight anybody, but otherwise you're you're gonna just have a blast. Ha! No pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it this plane. I will describe this plane when you upgrade it to the next airframe. It ditches the standard T tail, the two six two, and gets like a V tail. Oh, mm-hmm. why oh, do I like so that? Cool. This thing. <laughs> this is a sexy plane. Yeah. Is it the only just, plane in the game with a V tail plane? Uh, I don't know if it is. The, the tier ten's got it. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. But you know, how can you go wrong with a V tail? <laughs> with a V, anything. I'm quite I'm, sure you. <laughs> and, and I don't. I can't see the tech tree for the grind, but I, I, I have reason to believe you have engines unlocked at this point, and it's also unlocking engines for like the. 1101 and the 1092 well you don't need them for the 1101 but for like the 1092 it's unlocking for the bvps like you're you're unlocking things with this plane yep. with uh, the engine and stuff yep so in you're not struggling like you were with a 262 as much because i also don't think you need to do an airframe upgrade to get four guns either nope 
So you kind of you yeah I have it specialized so I don't get to see that. <laughs> uh, speaking of that, if you specialize it, my cruise speed surpasses the cruise speed of the tier ten. By the way, oh that's crazy. It is absolutely nuts. I don't beat it for boost, but I beat it for cruise wow. speed. It is this thing. It, it's true. You add about a tier to a tier and a half when you specialize and you like ultimate an aircraft. You, you're essentially playing at a different tier bracket. So it oh. is. This thing is a monster. It is. I do not fear getting into a tier ten match with this plane. Nice. Anyways. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I, I've got no complaints about the tier nine. All right. So, uh, Avalation, do you have the tier ten yet or no? I do not. So, uh, so with that, I will let I will let to it. Postal tease you as we move on to the <laughs> tier ten. So you mentioned, you know, you mentioned how good the tier nine looks once you get it fully upgraded. The tier ten looks like it's a freaking UFO, like in a good way. <laughs> it looks so futuristic the way the engines are set into the wing themselves. Yeah. You've got that V tail on it as well. Um, it just looks like it could have been like it, this. This sh couldn't have possibly been, you know, on paper in 1945. This would be something that could have been made in the 70s. Um, so if you if you go in line and you go from tier 8 to tier 9 to tier 10, as you learn those tactics, they just seamlessly move on to this tier 10. And um, there are some complaints about the plane, and uh, I'll address those right away, in the fact that you lose the air-to-air -air rockets. Um, and I can understand why if you're used to them at tier 8 and tier eight, um, blast planes in the face um, with those rockets. The only option you have on the tier 10 is the bombs. Uh, but for me, I don't even set it up with the bombs. I keep the bombs off and I just set this up as, as a speed demon. I don't have it specialized, um, but I have my airspeed um, as as good as it can be even not specialized because I've put the um, improved uprated engine on it. If you put the bombs on it, you're going to be slowing down a little bit. And you don't need the air-to-air -air rockets, in my opinion, because you're going so fast. You can dictate your angle of attack because um, quite often in an instant, oh, I'm coming at the wrong angle. Okay, I'll turn this way, give myself 10 seconds, turn back around and come at the angle that I want to come at. And so I don't need to worry about head-ons. I can make sure the angle of engagement is exactly what I need it to be. With this, they're the same guns that you had at Tier 9, but that just speaks to the strength that they were at Tier 9 because you are doing that 350 damage per second. You've got the 330 um, rounds a minute, and you've got the about 2,300-foot um, firing range. This plane is so quick. This plane can has great altitude performance, and... I just feel like at, at any given time, you know, I can be where I need to be. If there's an issue on the other side of the map, okay, I can be there. Um, and, yeah, it's not... I know there's a lot of comparison between this and things like the XF-90 that is faster than it, but it's not that much faster than it. And these guns make a huge difference. The, the, you were speaking about it probably what a Tier 6 V. If you can learn how to use 30 uh, mil cannons... That can be super detrimental. I compare it to, um, if you've ever played World of Tanks, the 122 millimeter um, cannons on like the Russian tanks are kind of a derpy, but everybody loves them because when they when you hit, you've got that um, that ability to really take off chunks of of hit points compared to things like um, 105 mil cannons um, on some of the other tanks. That's the comparison I make with these. The 30 mil cannons compared to the 20 mil cannons, these just melt planes. An EF-131, things like that, an SU-10, um, you can do a heck of a lot of damage to those high-tier bombers, those high-tier ground attack planes, uh, those other um, heavy fighters. And you are so quick that if you're, um, if you're doing a true boom and zoom, you're, you're hitting them and you're gone before they even really have a chance to react. Um, you force the enemy to be paying attention to the map as much as they're paying attention to the plane in front of mm -hmm. them. Because if they don't, you can make them regret it. 
Wow, wait. So if that doesn't hype you up for it. <laughs> yeah, it's it seems like uh, just a dominating force, especially at tier 10. Um, I am surprised that they excluded the rockets. I'm guessing that's more because it would have been too overpowered to let it have rockets as well. May happen. I don't think they're the only other plane. The only plane at tier 10 that has air to air rockets uh, is the BVP 215. And arguably, you could say the Hunter because those air to ground rockets kind of yeah. do a roll, but uh, I don't think it needs them. I don't think it really. Nobody's heading on. There's, there's very seldom are you heading on anybody. Like it's not really a thing. Uh, what I like about this plane is it's actually on par for the most maneuverable heavy. Finally, <laughs> like it, it's, <laughs> it's, it's got the same turn time as the javelin. It has the lowest altitude performance of the heavies, but what it, it's got good airspeed. It's got yeah. good climb rate. It has stellar firepower it's the same type of firepower you get in the javelin and arguably i'd like to think that this is actually going to be more accurate because the javelin's guns are wing mounted these are not they're, right. they're they're in they're in the hull also the javelin gets no air to ground ordnance this thing gets those two bombs and somebody might be thinking well you're sacrificing airspeed and it's mostly me but it wasn't until now when we were talking i looked at the reload the reload's only 120 seconds with how much I've been flying multi rolls lately, I know now that that is actually right on par with the multi roll reload time. That's a good reload time. It makes sense to carry those bombs. Yeah, they do do a decent amount of damage, ten thousand damage. Oh yeah, I, I would drop them both on whatever, and I would just keep moving. And it it can be it can be awesome. Uh, I haven't messed with it because I'm very I, I like to make sure I understand everything first before I start monkeying with with setups but I'm willing to bet that Raptor strike would be a really good option for some of these 262s the ability to dive down like maybe mm -hmm. maybe maybe set it up as more of a stealth build because the the worst thing that can happen is an aircraft knows you're coming and they maneuver but if yes. they can't see you and you dive on them you can go in there after that yak 30 and you're like i don't care he's barely moving he might as well be sitting still compared to me and bop 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 but i think it needs more testing you're right the thing looks like it's out of out of a friggin space age movie when i looked at the, when i looked at the picture in in the in the diagram like you only get the picture you don't get to like spin it around in your hangar like you do like uh with world of warships or even world of tanks you have to like go off of the picture and the picture i was like that thing looks ugly it looks really stout and ugly but mm -hmm. but guys it it's long it's long it's sleek it's it's flatter than it looks it's not fat it, it just looks like a more futuristic version of a 262 which is what they were they were like if the war was to keep going this is eventually what the 262 would theoretically be and it's just it was even beyond its time when it didn't exist because how long did it take before we figured out sweeped wings was the right way to go on jet fighters <laughs> right. this already had it on paper it had it with the hg2 it had it with the hg3 they already knew it's just a glorious plane, and I have not—I have not been disappointed with any of the tier ten heavy planes. I, I think that they're all great planes, and it, it's, you're so set up for it. You're so set up for success after flying the two six twos all the way up. Yep. Yeah, that's what I—I—I I, um, I agree with your. You know, all the tier tens or heavies are really good, um, and this is unique to them because. Um, you know, like you said, you've got the bombs if you want to have the bombs. It it doesn't have the best altitude performance, but it also retains its speed really well. It's something that I was paying attention to the last few times I was flying it. Yeah, you you know, you start hitting the yellow, I think, at like 9,000 feet or something like that. Let me double check here. 9,200 feet. What um, is that, though? <laughs> but, but, I mean, you could be up to... I'm up to 12,000 feet and whenever I want to be just because you've already learned the tactic of not you're not turning you're not up at 10,000 feet trying to dogfight somebody so you're retaining that speed and you're getting up really high um and it doesn't matter that that you're in the yellow or in the red up there because you're still flying um you know like a bat out of hell yep 
Yeah, so you're gonna love it, Avil. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm definitely <laughs> sold on it. That's a pretty convincing pitch. It's the credits. Uh, it's the credits and the time, though. That's what gets you. Yeah. Yeah. It it's worth a grind, though, for sure. So we've yeah. we've talked about all the aircraft, but if you were to put a bow on it, how would you describe? the german heavy line to somebody that's like well i was thinking about going down one of the heavy lines what would you how would you sell the german heavy line or how would you describe it accurately so that way somebody knew what they were getting into Ooh, that, that's a good question that i wasn't uh, quite prepared for yeah um, uh I, I i'll i'll offer one um it is a very iconic line that if you put the time and effort into it, it'll reward you. Um, but the grind is going to take some dedication and time in order to get you there. It is not an easy button, but it is worth the effort. And that's how I think I would describe this line. I think I would say that um, learning to play this line well will make every other heavy fighter line in the game much easier to play because this is yeah this is the very strong guns you know tier for tier strong guns all the way down um and because they're not very maneuverable once you play you know something like the american or the um the the minuscule um, japanese that there are in the game those are going to seem like like almost easy mode just because you've got some maneuverability, but you've got so much more airspeed with these planes that you don't necessarily have all the time consistently on the other line. So for me, I just think these are a very strong tier for tier, you know, some of the strongest planes in the game. Um, if yeah. you learn to play the tactics properly. Yeah. I was going to say that it's almost the essential heavy line, um, especially as I was saying before about getting ruined by, uh, the first 262, uh, if you don't know what these planes are about, you're going to hate running into them. So it's definitely worth uh, spending a bit of time and uh, getting to know them. Well, and they can be, they're strong because you, you learn those tactics, right? Like we've all, when we were first playing the game, you run into an ME410 and you're like, oh my God, that plane just friggin' I'm out of hit points. Um, yeah. But the first time I hopped in a 410, it wasn't like just suddenly knocking people out of the sky, right? There's nuances to each plane on this line, and those nuances can take you from being a mediocre plane or a mediocre pilot in a mediocre plane to, you know, um, a good pilot in a in a good plane. Yeah, I I think we chose like re refresh my memory if i'm wrong but i think we chose this line because we had covered the americans because we felt like there was people that were going down the american light fighter line that probably shouldn't have been as their initial go but we also wanted to show people that there it's not a bad line it's just a difficult line to go down i think with this line more our message is it's this is this is heavy fighters this is you, this is how you learn how to fly them. This is this is very consistent performance. Like the way they fly stays the same all the way through. And if you can figure this out, it'll make you better at altitude fighters. It'll make you better at heavy fighters. You'll get the boom and zoom tactic way better. And there's so much yeah. to be learned. Plus, they're beautiful planes. True, true. That they are. These are like the um, the New York City of heavy fighters. If you can make it here, you can make it in. <laughs> <laughs> It's so cheesy. <laughs> oh, all right. With that said, <laughs> thanks for watching, guys. Uh, thanks from VBAT over at VPlays, and thanks from Postal Monkey and Avalation for uh, getting together. We, it took us nearly a month to link up to do this, so uh, we've had our video footage sitting in the archive for a while. Hopefully we'll be able yeah. to churn this out a little bit quicker, but... Uh, thanks for tuning in. Yeah, had a blast. Thanks. Yeah, thanks, guys. Cheers. All right. See ya.